Hey, Coach McIntyre. How you doing, guys? Uh, we're excited about getting to game week. I know that. Um, so uh, next week games, and then I guess tomorrow there's some college games. So it's uh, starting to get fun times of playing. Hopefully it's a little bit more normal than, like, than it was last year. All right, let's start off with Terry. How you doing, Coach Mack? Good to see you again, man. Good to see you. Hey, hey, how how ready do you think you are to getting ready to be in a peak form like you were last year? Sometimes it takes a few games to get there. How close are you being to getting where you want to be? Well, you know, as a coach, you're always looking for different um, little details to make sure you get there. But um, we have a better overall knowledge, of course. They know how to correct themselves if mistakes happen during the course of a drive. They, you know, have a good con – they understand our concepts. Um, but it always takes a few games to, you know, I think to get um, rolling, um, to really get comfortable, especially, you know, your adrenaline gets going. And, and sometimes you're, it's your um, – you're, we're in great shape, but it's funny how the first couple games you're not – and all of a sudden your guys can play the whole game without Harley coming out at times. Uh, I think that's part of it too, just to get through the adrenaline of it. Evan? Hey, Mike, how are we doing? I'm doing good. Um, so I'm curious. So up, we know up front, you know, you got you got the guys, Mojo, you got Tate, you got um, a few of the guys back. Who has kind of established themselves kind of behind, you know, getting some of that depth at D-line that's kind of, really, you know, make that front stronger? Well, I, I tell you, we've uh, there's been a, quite a few guys in there. And, uh, you know, Mo White's a guy that's done well for us. Uh, I don't know if you said Ducksworth is a really good player, been playing well for us. Um, and then um, KO has been doing some good things. And, of course, uh, Cam Jackson um, has, has really had a good – he's kind of just kind of grown out of a puppy into a – maybe a dog now. I wouldn't say he's a, 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 a wolf yet, but he, he is uh, amazing, um, his length and size, and is really starting to understand how to play. Um, so – and then we've had a couple of freshmen that have looked pretty good. We'll see how they keep progressing. And then, too, obviously we saw yesterday that uh, Laundre Thomas is now in the transfer portal. So with the depth at cornerback, who do you kind of see kind of stepping up with Julian, Jacoby, and Silvante kind of, you know, helping uh, in that position a little bit more? Yeah, uh, you know, Greg Rubens had a really good camp, and the, um, Devante Nelson's a good player. Um, so I, those are two guys that are, you know, stepping up um, in there and, and doing well. What is it about the two of them? Because I know Greg obviously got just got here, and Devontae is obviously, you know, a retro freshman, two local guys too. But what have they really done to kind of, you know, make themselves uh, stand out so much? Well, you know, Greg got here in January, which helped him a lot going through spring practice. Had been, um, Greg has really good vision, really good understanding of how to play corner, um, excellent athlete. You know, Devontae Nelson is a really good, um, tough, hard-nosed football player. Um, they just compete really hard, and um, they've got good ball skills, both of them. So they, they've kind of stepped up and done some really good things. Thanks. Hey, Coach, we talked to – um, how you doing? I'm doing good. You got your Zoom working today. All right. Good. Good. <laughs> yeah, last time I got cut I out on It was on like you. on the glitch last time. I, I just <laughs> thought you were, uh, you know, dishing on me, trying not to talk to me. I got it. I, I hear you. It's, it's my first day of Wi-Fi at the new spot. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to ask you about J.J. Russell. Um, you know, he talked about how his walk um, with God has kind of helped him read himself and his draw on the field. How has that affected the locker room and the way he's been able to lead? Uh, you know, J.J., number one, is a, a really good football player, and he's extremely tough. Um, he's a young man that, you know, does everything that we ask him to do. And uh, he's a, a vocal leader. He's not just a leader on the football field. And, you know, how he's living his life off the field does make a difference because when he tells him, I'm not doing this, you don't need to be doing this. I need to be focused. I'm focused. You're focused. So he doesn't only, he only, doesn't only talk it, he actually lives it. And so um, that's been a great example in the locker room. And I have noticed a difference with a lot of the guys. And when he talks, he's kind of like the old EF Hutton commercial. When JJ talks, they listen. And uh, so I think uh, that's what he does. And then uh, this is more geared toward your younger guys. I know it's the, you know, first game of the season. Um, emotions are going to be running high for the start of the season, and I'm sure they're going to want to go out there and hit somebody. How do you – do you have that conversation with them of, of gauging the emotions but also staying in the game and your schemes and everything? Yeah, we, we talk about that quite often. Uh, you know, repetition of us doing it over and over and over and practicing it well 
does calm your nerves because you, you, you need to revert back to your fundamentals and hopefully we stayed on them close enough with our fundamentals. You know, sometimes the younger guys haven't been able to do it as much as some of our older guys um, and they're able to concentrate in, in the game. Um, you know, the first team we play, Nichols is, uh, you know, they average 48 points a game in the spring. I mean, they, they, they score points. They got an excellent quarterback that transferred from LSU that was a Gatorade, I think Gatorade player of the year in the state of Louisiana. Um, and uh, they've got some talent on offense. And so our guys are going to have to be locked in um, to, to play really well. I appreciate you. Glad I got to chat with you this time. All right. Thank you. Mark and then Terry. Yeah. Hey, Mike, how are you? I'm doing well. Um, I, I'm curious. This is a program that over the years it, it, during this run that it's been on has been known as more of an offensive team um, right. in general. Um, and not to say you're rooting against the offense from having another great year, but it's... No, please. They didn't have an unbelievable year. I expect them to. <laughs> but to, to see that with the amount of veterans you have, the amount of older guys you have, it seems like you're set up to have, you know, on paper at least, a better defense than what Memphis has traditionally had during this run. Um, is that something that can be used motivationally with a group that, you know, hey... Like you guys haven't been talked about and maybe this is the year where they'll say, you know, Memphis has a great team because of its defense, not just its offense. Like, do you, is that, does that play any role in this? Do you think about that at all? Just in terms of changing the perception of the program? Even? You know, I think the kids um, hear it because people have talked about it like you are. They, that that mm -hmm. question has been brought up. Different things have been, I think, written about it. Um, you know, they want to play well and do well. I, I you know, I, I just felt like last year after we got going, they bought into that. They, they felt mm -hmm. like um, there were some games there at the end that they played really well and kept playing and helped us definitely win. Um, mm -hmm. And I think they have that mentality. Their mentality is uh, we don't want the offense to outscore them. We want to shut them down. And so mm -hmm. if they had that mentality all the time, there's going to be games where people are going to score some points. I, I, yeah. I'd hate to not say that, but that's going to be the way, but we've got to find ways to get stops. We've got to find ways to make them kick field goals. And then we've got to, we've got to play better consistently, um, more consistently than we did last year, um, especially at the beginning. So, um, yeah, they do have a little bit of chip on their shoulder to uh, play better and, um, and, you know, kind of be um, what they want to be. There's no doubt about that. And then I wanted to ask you a question about Ryan. You've been a head coach who's had to make, a quarterback decision in the past when it's close or, you know, and it's a new guy. Um, I, I'm curious, one, if you've talked with Ryan about, at all about that process over the off season, what have you, and then two, just in general, what that was like as a head coach, having to make that call ultimately when you're picking a new starter for the starting quarterback for the program. Right. When it, um, you know, Ryan, I've talked to, and I've talked a little bit about it, um, but, you know, Kevin Johns and Ryan, they'll handle that. They, they yeah. see those guys every day. I'm so focused on the, on the defense, um, what's going on there. Um, and, uh, you know, they'll make the right decision on that. It's, it's always kind of a, when you're a head coach, you're looking at it. There's, there's a lot of different, um, I guess, chips that are on the table, different ways when you're looking at the situation. And um, I know Ryan and Kevin do a great job making the decision on that. And, and you know, the quarterbacks, all of our quarterbacks have made plays in camp and done different things. So I, um, whoever they put out there will do well. Appreciate it, Mike. Terry and then Evan. Hey, Coach, one uh, key area for our defense to be really good is be good at discipline, get the guys off the field, get the other team off the field, not extend plays. What's your approach to instilling that discipline in your team to not create, you know, silly fouls to extend drives? Right. Uh, well, that's part of the whole program that uh, Ryan does. I think it's a whole program um, consistency base of them being disciplined on and off the field, them being disciplined at practice, them being disciplined at showing up on time to different things, um, lot netting guys cut edges. Um, and so if you, let, if you let a few guys cut edges, then everybody's going to cut the edge. And I think that Ryan's done an excellent job, and I think that our older players um, in this um, program – understand the discipline factor of it and so I think it's an overall program aspect and that and then defense offense special teams all falls into that and uh, holds it accountable but a lot of that um, you know coaches do a lot of the discipline there's no doubt about it um, but the ultimate discipline is how much do they care about each other as teammates 
you know, is it more important to do something like that and hurt the team? Or is it more important to act correctly, not lose it, not do some type of celebration foul that would hurt the team? Um, and, you know, there's all kind of, you know, they've the, one of the issues that's happened in college football, just to be honest with you, is now that the NFL has let all the celebrations go, you know, the kids watch all that. They see all that. Plus, you know, they play Xbox a couple hours a day and they're celebrating on Xbox. So it's a little bit in the culture, so to speak, of the game. Um, I wish they would not be as stringent on it in college. I wish they'd let the kids be kids some, but they're not. So they, uh, they need to control themselves like grownups, not like kids. So there's a lot that goes into that. But I would say, first and foremost, I would say that Ryan's done an excellent job of the overall discipline and culture of the team. How's your Xbox game? Yeah. And now, how's your Xbox game? Oh, you I'm not any good at Xbox. My boys are, so I don't play them because they beat me all the time. So, but um, and it, it, uh, here's the other funny thing about Xbox. Every, you know, I've had people ask me in the past, is, well, why do you have multiple helmets? And why do you have multiple uniforms? Why don't every just stay traditional and everybody wear the, you know, you wear a couple uniforms. I said, have you ever watched a kid play Xbox? For an hour, they they set up and arrange their uniforms, design their uniforms, design what they're going to wear. I mean, it's all, again, it's all part of that media culture. All right, Evan, and then we'll wrap up with Frank. All right, last thing for me, Mike. Uh, we've yep. obviously talked to Julian Barnett. You were high on him before preseason camp started. Um, just from now, from the start to now, do you, how do you see him being used? And have you seen him and Jacoby Francis really kind of connect the form kind of that one, two punch in the secondary we've seen on the, uh, on Twitter, if you will. Yeah. Julian is an excellent athlete. And what he's done is he's improved every day because um, he hasn't played a lot of DB, you know, he's just been a great athlete in high school and, you know, played everything. And then it was at Michigan state. He played some DB played receiver, he played kick returner. So, um, you know, this past spring and this fall camp has really just been where he's just been isolated at one position. And so he, every day I've seen him improve. Um, and, you know, he will make some great plays and he might have a couple bad plays just because he hasn't seen it that much. But once he kind of keeps seeing everything, um, he has all the tools to be a great one. Thank you. Hey, with the offense being in the quarterback battle and each quarterback getting their chances with the ones and the twos and everything, how does that help you guys defensively being able to defend against different looks as you prepare for the season? Yeah, I, I think it does because, uh, you know, different quarterbacks do different things, um, you know, and, and the way they've rotated quarterbacks and done that, it, it gives our guys uh, understanding of, you know, how different quarterbacks read, how different quarterbacks look, the different mannerisms. I think it always helps um, to play against different guys. Um, and uh, it's kind of like a point guard in basketball. Some point guards are penetrators. Some point guards are going to go over the top of the pick. Some point guards will be three-point shooters. So I'm going to dive and dish out. And it just helps you learn how all those different things you see as a defense. It helps you see more, um, more opportunities to, to get better and, and, see, and have your vision improve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Coach McIntyre. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good day.